By now you're probably aware that Adobe has updated Lightroom Classic. We now have version CC 2019 or otherwise known as Lightroom Classic version 8. Now there's a ton of new features in there. Some of these features are really obvious and some of them are hidden and maybe require a little handholding to know how to use them. Right now in this review slash tutorial, we're going to go in depth and look at all the important new features inside of Lightroom Classic CC 2019. Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from PhotoshopCafe.com, the very best place to learn Photoshop and Lightroom. And if you haven't subscribed yet, consider hitting that subscribe button right now and get new Photoshop and Lightroom tutorials from me every single week. All right, so what we're going to do is jump straight in headfirst into these new features inside of Lightroom Classic CC 2019. And the very first one is HDR Panorama. So you might be saying, whoa, hang on a sec. Didn't you just do a tutorial on HDRs and Panorama about a week ago? Is that now obsolete? Well, no, it isn't. But we've got some new things we're going to jump in here and I'll talk about that in a sec. So here we are in this beautiful bay here and I wanted to take a photograph to bring out the greenery here because the greenery is one of the beautiful things in Hawaii. However, we lose the sky. Now, if I set my exposure here to bring out the beautiful detail in these clouds in this nice blue sky, notice everything becomes black in the foreground and we lose it. So what I do is I bracket three shots. Now I was using a Sony a7 III for this particular series of photographs. And so what I did is just set it to auto exposure bracket, hold it down, click, click, click. And now it's taking a photograph to bring out the detail and the highlights and the shadows, merge these together into one image. It's called HDR high dynamic range. Much more information in that tutorial that I've already done on HDR panoramas. Check it out underneath. Okay, so one of the things though, is I wanted to capture the whole bay. So not only did I take three shots pointing this direction, I took three here, three here, and three here. So I'm shooting the whole bay, capturing the panorama. So in order to create an HDR and panorama at the same time, what we need to do first of all is merge all the HDR images together, and that creates these nice photos with the full dynamic range. Then we take those and stitch them into a panorama. So it's a multi-step process. However, we can do it all in one shot right now inside of Lightroom. And by the way, this new feature here is also available inside of Camera Raw, as are all the features that we're covering. All right, so what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna hit Control A or Command A to select all of these. And now I'm just gonna right click, and then we're gonna choose Photo Merge. And instead of doing HDR and then Panorama, we're just gonna do HDR Panorama at once. And now it's putting it all together. Now, one of the things I wanna mention, using the Sony camera here, this was just handheld, it's gonna work really well. We had some issues though with some of the DJI stuff, and that's because the metadata on the DJI drones, it's shooting 0.7 of a stop rather than two stops or one stop, and it's not always 0.7, it's not always exactly the same. So I'm kind of looking into this and trying to figure out a workaround, and as soon as I figure it out, I'm gonna let you guys know. Meanwhile, check out the other tutorial for doing HDRs and panoramas. Right now we can see we've sort of got our picture going together. We've got all this stuff around the edge. So why don't we get rid of that? We can turn on auto crop and it will get rid of those transparent areas. However, now the edge of that boat is really close to the edge and we're losing the top of the tree. So let me turn that off. We could go into Photoshop, use content aware fill to fill up those edges and that would work really well. Or we can grab the boundary warp and just slide this out and stretch all the pixels out. And now we've got everything. You'll notice another option here. This one belongs to the HDR part. That's auto settings. If I turn that on, it's going to make those adjustments automatically for us. I'm going to turn it off now and we're going to do it manually. And we're just going to hit merge. And right now it's merging all of this together in the background. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to scroll down and find the new image that's been added. So let's go down right now. And there it is. It's a DNG file. Let's open it up. And we're going to go to our develop module and have a look at what we can do with it. Now this looks like a beautiful panorama. Now just like any other panorama, except if we go in the exposure slider, we can see, look at all that detail we've got in the highlights and all that detail there in the shadows. So a regular panorama is going to blow out to white or it's going to blow out to black when we adjust it and lose the details in the shadows and highlights. Whereas doing this, we've got all the detail of all the shadows and all the detail of all the highlights all contained inside the image. So let's bring it out and make it look nice. So we're going to recover all the highlight detail 
and I'm going to recover all the shadow detail. So right now we're looking at this and it kind of looks like we're looking through a little dirty window, but we've got lots of dynamic range. Let's clean the window right now. And the way to do that is by using contrast. Now we could adjust the contrast slider to enhance our blacks and whites, and it will also get rid of this artificial look. But rather than doing it all there, I'm going to go down to the whites and blacks, which do exactly the same thing, but give me individual control over the highlights and shadows. So let's lighten up and brighten up those whites. There we go. That's looking a lot better. And now we're going to drop in the blacks and this is going to give us a nice body to our image and some depth. And you can see right there, handheld HDR panorama, simply done right here inside of Lightroom. Now what I'm going to do is we're going to jump into the next new feature. Now the next new feature is interesting because it involves the latest technology with smartphones. So on this hand, we have the brand new Apple 10s, which uses an AI chip and also dual lens camera on the front for capturing a depth field and estimating the, the three dimensional depth of our objects using portrait mode on the camera. Now over here, I have the new Google Pixel 3 which also uses AI and a smart camera for creating depth of field. And it also has a dual forward facing camera, so it can also do it in portrait mode. Now, both of these cameras here are shooting in a format called HEIC, which is a high efficiency format, which has a depth map built in with the photo shot in portrait mode. Now, in order to enable this, what I did is I put Lightroom CC on both of these phones and then under Lightroom CC, under preferences, there's an option to turn on the depth map. Now I turn on the depth map and then you can use the camera inside of Lightroom and capture these photos in a high efficiency format. Now I've got some tutorials of some things I'm going to do in the future in Photoshop and stuff using HEIC and you guys are going to love it. But right now let's focus on what's new here inside of Lightroom. So you'll notice there's a few photos I shot using that camera and we're going to use this one here. And yes, this is a rugby ball. This is a practice ball for the All Blacks, which is the New Zealand rugby team, which is the best rugby team in the world. All right, moving on, let's have a look here. We're going to go under the develop module here. And under the develop module, we're going to enable these HEIC. Notice you can see the file format there. The extension is HEIC. Let's have a look at this depth map, because right now you might have no idea what I'm talking about. Okay, in order to do this, we need to use one of these three tools, either the gradient, the radial, or the brush. So let's just use the brush and just kind of click to apply it. And notice we now go into our options here. So let's scroll down to our options. And then under range mask, this is where we can find it. So under range mask, we've always had color and luminance for a while, but depth is brand new. And if I turn this on, it's now reading the depth map. What is a depth map? Well, let me show you. Turn it on. And you can see right there, that's the depth map of a rugby ball. Now, whenever we shoot something with that, white is closer to the camera, black is further away from the camera, and different shades of gray determine how far away from the camera or how much depth that has in Z space, which is coming right at you. Now, this is not new. This is something I've been using for years inside of 3D with Maya and different things like that. But in photography, it's brand new, and I'm super excited because it's just beginning and there's going to be so many exciting things we're going to be able to do with photography using these depth maps. And it's just going to, it's going to blow our minds. So once again, I'm going to do some experimentation. Don't forget to subscribe, and then you'll see some of those videos as I put them out. But let's jump in right now and see what we can do in Lightroom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep this preview on for now, and I'm just going to create a really huge brush, and I'm just going to paint here. What I'm doing is I'm just painting with the brush tool and it creates a mask. Now, I don't even have to worry about doing a good job. In fact, I'm not going to do a good job. I'm going to do a really, really rough job on purpose. Okay, so now we've sort of got our mask where we're going to apply our adjustments. But notice it's all over the place. We definitely want to hone this on on the ball. And we can do that by adjusting the range. So if we go down to the range here, this is shadows. And this is highlights. Notice that we have selected outside of the ball. If we had selected the ball, we'd be wanting to use the highlights. But because we're using the background, we're going to pull in the shadows. Notice that. And there's our mask right there. So it's created that. Now we can use the smoothness here. If we turn it all the way to the left, it has a very, very harsh edge. All the way to the right, it's just going to be kind of muddy. So what you want to do is just pull it up a little bit. Just so we've got a slight feathered edge. So we're not going to get really harsh edges. Um, so it's just going to blend in nicely and smoothly. Okay, so let's just turn off this range mask now. And what can we do with this mask? A lot of things. So let's go up here. And one of the things we're going to do is we're just going to take our 
saturation all the way down. Let's make the background black and white. So let's pull the saturation all the way down. Notice that right there and the ball didn't get changed. Let's drop down our contrast all the way as well. And maybe we want to kind of blur it a little bit. So we can go to clarity and push it to the negative side and it'll actually create a blur effect. And notice how that mask is holding on our ball. So this is just a very simple example. Imagine the kind of things that you could do with it um, on your own photographs. So this next new feature, people shooting Canon and shooting Nikon are gonna be so happy. And that's improved tethering. So the tethering has sped up significantly. What I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna plug this camera in and I'm gonna show you exactly how that works. So we plug our camera in, we turn it on obviously. And then what we're gonna do is we go up under the menu here and then we're going to choose to go to File, Tethered Capture, Canon, and then we just click on Start Tethered Capture. Okay, and then you're going to see this little controller is going to come up that's going to enable us to shoot. Now, this isn't new, and in fact, I can just grab my Canon camera right now, and why don't I just zoom in on my other camera and just shoot it. Let me change it down. And then notice how quickly those are loading up. Um, in the past, it took a lot longer for it to do that. And that's really the main thing about it. So now we've got faster tethered shooting on the Canon camera, um, which before it was kind of slow and really pretty much unusable for a situation where maybe you were shooting models or something like that in the studio. Now we can. Now, as far as other cameras being supported right now, we've got Nikon and Canon. And I think a lot of the issue has to do with manufacturers not opening up their API. Um, I know, for example, DJI were dealing with the same issue with the Ronin um, because Sony was not giving access to the API, so you couldn't put all the controls in that you could for some of the other cameras. So I wouldn't turn around and blame uh, Adobe for this, that your camera brand is not supported. It might be your manufacturer that's actually um, not opening up the API for them. And a couple of other new features are um, a brand new processing engine. We're now up to processing engine number five. So I'll show you where we can find that. That's under develop and we go down to the camera calibration. So if we go all the way down to the bottom, we'll see calibration. And you'll remember seeing these other versions. And so the process version is the way that Lightroom and also Camera Raw process those images. Everything from the debayering, from the uh, CMOS card, all the way through to how the adjustments are applied. So with version 5, we're seeing some uh, improvements in the noise and high SO photos. So the noise is not as bad. It's, it's a little bit smoother. And also another thing that we're seeing here is under dehaze. So in the dehaze here, we can kind of punch that up a little bit, which is great for, you know, bringing out some detail in clouds and skies. I do that a lot with my drone photos. But another thing that it can do is if you push it into negative dehaze area, it can create a little bit of atmospheric fog. Now, I didn't really use it because it was sort of patchy, but now uh, they've improved it where we can get a nice smooth, even kind of an atmosphere as we push it back. And look at that, it looks like we've got fog going on there. So those are the main new features inside of Lightroom Classic. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, and if you did, drop a comment and let me know. I'd love to know if you guys are using Lightroom or Photoshop, you're using both. And by the way, all the adjustments inside of Lightroom are also in Camera Raw, including all these new features. They also work in Camera Raw inside of Photoshop. So if you like this video, smash that like button. Also consider hitting that subscribe button right now, and then you're going to get a new tutorial from me at least once a week. Also hit that little notification bell so you're notified whenever I upload that new video. So I hope you hit that and now you're part of the cafe crew. So anyway guys, thanks for watching. Until next time, I'll see you at the cafe. Mm -hmm.